drop off before uh, the presentation's finished, you'll be able to take a look at it. And also you'll be able to forward that on to other folks that would have an interest uh, in, in some of these products. So um, the folks that I have on the line with me today are Steve Sinelli. I think many of you are familiar with Steve. He is our RF and microwave application engineer. And then I have the Steve Sinelli for each of the other areas, uh, Kevin Dobis, Nathan Harmon, and Pranav Yoshi. So uh, with that, I'm going to, again, remind you if you have any questions, put them in chat that we are recording this session. And I'm going to hand this over to Steve Sinelli to talk about uh, a few physical layer products that you may not realize that we have. Then we're going to move on to Kevin Dobis is going to talk about our San Jose Wave Judge, which is uh, akin to a sniffer type product. Uh, we're going to talk to Nathan Harmon about uh, the Nemo uh, products. And then we're going to have a Pranav Yoshi talk about uh, the very uh, rich and complete offering that we offer through Ixia. So with that, Steve, please uh, take it away. Well, thanks, everybody, for coming. I really appreciate your time. Um, this is a really exciting time to be working at Keysight with all these new components that uh, that we've added to Keysight, these other great companies like Ixia and San Jose and uh, Prisma, uh, we have a complete OSI stack coverage for the 5G uh, portfolio. So not only do I see a lot of uh, work in the commercial side, but I see a lot of 5G.mil interest. And it, at the heart of everything, if you think about what we're looking at here, right in the middle of this slide is the 5G RAN. So that's the radio access network and typically called the G node B. But well, what they're doing now is they're actually, you know, calling it a disaggregated unit. So in the old days, everything that's inside of the, uh, the the radio unit be up on a tower. You'd have everything from the RF receiver all the way through, uh, you know, the the digital stream of data. What they're looking to do in 5G is break these into disaggregated units. So you'll see the RU, the ORAN radio unit, the ORAN uh, DU, and the and the CU. So basically, what you're used to us, you know, Mary and I showing it was everything from our RF side, you know, creating something to test a UE, this UXM, or something to create a fade or a multipath environment, testing the physical layer. Well, what we've actually done, we had to get some kind of a glue software in here to be able to let you test a DU without an RU or an RU without a DU. Since you may have, you know, one vendor's RU and another vendor's DU, how does that uh, that disaggregated unit behave? Well, is it the RF layer that's uh, causing an impairment or, or is it the, the digital stream? So this ORAN actually can simulate, it's a, a software application that actually can live on a server that can actually stream data from the RF, you know, into our RF traditional solutions or create the test vectors that will allow you to, um, to, to serve the DU. So a lot of folks may be familiar with um, our signal studio for creating, you know, LTE and WCDMA signals. We have 40, 50 different signal studios. Well, we can create a physical layer test signal. We hand that file over to this ORAN studio, which actually builds these files. And, and the highlighted one here is the PCAP, which actually can be examined uh, with Wireshark. Yep. Hello, girl. Come on, Parker. Okay, maybe we can mute him, Marianne. Uh, so the PCAP can actually stimulate an RU. So you can start with complete software. This can be all loaded on this uh, appliance that we have called the ORAN appliance. Or you can actually work inside of complete software simulation where we have the ability to test both forward link and reverse link coming from a UE. Of course, we always have the ability to inject our test equipment at either side of these um, units so that we can verify that we're creating the correct physical layer signal and now we can verify that we're correcting we're uh, creating the correct test vectors for playing out from this appliance which actually has you know QSFP and SFP connectors to create the digital vector stream and that's my introduction Marianne I'll let you go I don't want to waste too much time with um, the physical layer I know we have a lot of things to cover Okay, thanks, Steve. Um, I'd like to ask Kevin Dovis to please uh, give us an overview of the uh, San Jose product uh, wave judge. Take it away, Kevin. 
And Kevin, we don't hear you. We may have muted you. So if you can unmute yourself. Is that better? Perfect. Thank you. OK, great. Thanks, Marianne. Um, so I'm going to introduce the latest product in the Keysight portfolio. Um, some of you may be familiar, familiar with a wave judge. Um, we do have some wave judge units in your area. Um, and this is essentially a an RF sniffer. So what I'm going to do is give you probably five minutes on you know what the wave judge does, how it fits in, and how it may be used. Um, so essentially, the high level overview is that the wave judge is an RF sniffer. So we we passively capture the RF signals on a 4G or 5G network. Okay, and we do that by we do that by connecting to base stations in a lab as well as devices in the lab. So in a lab environment, you know, there's normally a cabled conducted atmosphere between the, the base station and the UEs, or there could be an anechoic chamber, okay? So the wave judges effectively captures that RF signal between the base station and the UE, and we can also do it over the air. So here on this picture, you can see that I have a downlink antenna connected to the wave judge. I have an uplink antenna connected to the wave judge. And once again, we're, we're capturing the entire RF transmission for both downlink and uplink over the air or in a cable conducted environment for both 4G and 5G. We do that using the wave judge hardware, which you can see here. And the wave judge hardware sends all that RF information to the Windows PC, which is running the wave judge software. And I can show you that here. I have the actual real wave judge GUI here, and I can show you that shortly. Um, so that's essentially kind of the high level, you know, what does a wave judge do? Capture the RF signals for 4G, 5G, and we do analysis on that signal. Here gives you a little bit more information. You know, what types of base stations do we operate with? And we can do both real E node B, G node Bs, or small cells, or ORAN. So, you know, you can have a real E node B, G node B in your lab or you can be capturing information from a real live network. So you can use a wave judge to capture, for example, you know, the Army network, the Verizon network, the AT&T network, and a number of the government agencies are doing that for some spectrum refarming tests. You know, they're, they're taking the wave judge out into the field, capturing the Verizon or AT&T spectrum or the, or the you know, DISA, DISA, DSO spectrum to try to do some tests that way. So we operate with real base stations, real small cells, real ORANs, but we also operate with simulated base stations. So you may have a Keysight UXM in your lab that is a simulated base station and it's connecting to real users, real UEs in the lab. Um, and this, this is one of the applications that, that some of the um, Aberdeen folks are doing today already. Um, and the other thing we can do is proprietary base stations or UEs. So the application we're working with now in your lab is that there is a there's a proprietary general dynamics base station here. It does not follow the 3GPP specs. And Wave Judge can handle that as well. So really, it doesn't matter what it is. Real E node B, G node Bs that follow the 3GPP specs, simulated E node G, B, G node Bs, or proprietary base stations that are doing something special. And the same thing on the device side. If you have real UEs or simulated UEs, all of that traffic uplink and downlink will be captured by the wave judge in a cabled conducted environment or over the air and we give analysis of two different types so there's two very distinct um you know analysis information we give you number one is the rf physical layer analysis and you can see that here on the right side of the wave judge gui um, I don't have a lot of time to talk about that today, but if you're interested in more information, you can work with Barry or Marianne. You know, we can set up some individual meetings. But you can see we we display all, what's happening to that RF transmission over the air. Constellation diagrams. We can show you the power of the downlink and the uplink, whether that's sending it to noise floor. You can see power bursts for each downlink and uplink. You know, we show you resource block map, spectral power. So there's a whole host of information we give you, including 5G beam forming information. The second type of analysis is protocol analysis. We do that for both the control plane, so you can see all of the control plane information. For example, whenever a, whenever a UE joins the network or drops from the network or whenever the UE is being set up, including the NAS layer protocol that shows you that the UE is being set up for ciphering. 
Okay, so we show all of that, but we also do user plane. So if you're interested to actually see what is the real user data being transmitted up or down, the wave judge can decode that as well. Okay, so we decode all of those protocol messages. And here in the window, you can see some of these are being sent from the UE, the uplink messages. Some are coming from the base station. Some of these messages may be coming from that proprietary base station. And the wave judge is able to change some of the protocol definitions so that even though you may have some base stations proprietary, we can change the definition of the protocol. We can still double click it and decode all of those messages. Okay, for ciphering, we actually do decode ciphered messages. You can see here, there's an example of a lot of the messages here are ciphered. You can see the NAS layer. Wave Judge captures all the NAS layer to, to understand what are the ciphered um, setup and instructions. And then we use those ciphered setup instructions to decode all the, of the data. So we will continue to decode ciphered data um, you know, we support decoding all those ciphered messages, and we can even do that um, if if the user plane is ciphered. And we can do that because we have another hardware device, which is very small, it's tiny, called the Cypher Judge. And this is basically a key sniffer. And the way that works is we take the SIM card out of the phone, we put the SIM card into the Cypher Judge. So the Cypher Judge now has a SIM card inside. And there's a cable connecting the cipher judge to the phone. And whenever the phone communicates to the SIM card, the communication passes through the cipher judge and we, we intercept the cipher key. Now that we have the cipher key, we transfer that key to the wave judge GUI. And once again, all of those ciphered messages are decoded. So, so everything I've mentioned today, you know, capture the RF, show you the protocols and the RF signals for all the protocol layers can be done whether the messages are ciphered or in the clear, okay? And we do that in real time. It's gap free. We don't miss any of the messages, um, you know, and full protocol stack, all of which can be imported or exported. And again, the last thing I'll mention is if you're, you can also use a third party device instead of the wave judge hardware to capture the RF. This is very useful if you already own other key site tools like the Keysight UXM or, you know, even MATLAB or any really anything else that will take the the IQ, the uh, RF capture and convert it to IQ. And you can use the Wave Judge software only package instead of the software and hardware together. And we're doing a, a lot of the other government agencies and some of the research in universities, Johns Hopkins and MITRE, you know, some of those folks are using the Wave Judge software only to decode some things where they're not capturing the RF with the Wave Judge. They're using other tools to capture the RF. For example, any one of these key site tools, you may be capturing at some other location of the network, and you can still use that information to analyze with Wave Judge. So let me stop there and say, I hope that makes sense. Marianne or Barry, did, was anything not clear? Does anybody want to ask questions before I hand it off? That was clear to me. Um, is, are there any questions? I don't see any in the chat. If you have questions, if you can put them into the chat, we'd be happy to answer them. Okay, great. Thank you, everybody. I'll stop sharing. Thanks, Kevin. So I think with that, we're going to uh, hand it off to Nathan Harmon. Nathan, take it away. Sorry, I was on mute. Can everybody hear me? We hear you fine. Thank you. Beautiful. All right, and you can see my slides? We do. Thank you. All right. On. So I know some of you are familiar with the NEMO group, but to kind of hit the highlights, what we highlights, what we do in NEMO is we test the RAN or the air interface. So what we do is we communicate directly to the chipsets in the device. So we use commercial devices. Um, and then we get any of the messaging that comes down from the cell site or the phone sends back to the cell site. Um, you'll see on this slide, we have a whole bunch of different products. Um, on the collection side, all of the products are collect the same information. Uh, the difference is, is the form factor in which we do it. So high level Nemo Outdoor is our laptop based solution. Uh, the benefit there is you get a laptop, so you get a big screen so you can use see a lot of KPIs at the same time. 
Natively, it supports up to nine devices in a scanner. You can then upgrade that to the Backpack Pro, which is um, basically a backpack that plugs into your Nemo Outdoor, and that'll expand you to 12 or 18 devices. Um, Walker Air is our Bluetooth-enabled device, so where Backpack Pro plugs into the laptop via Ethernet, Walker Air is completely Bluetooth. Um, the downside of that is, is we're using an Android tablet for control, so your smaller screen and less flexibility. But the benefit there is everything is Bluetooth, so that's kind of nice to support seven devices in the scanner. Um, additionally, we have autonomous probes. If you want to mount the probe in a trash truck, taxi cab, base station, office, whatever you want, it can be 100% controlled by our Nemo Cloud product, which allows you to um, control it autonomously and, and not need to be on site with the device. It either works with the box or without the box. You can just use a, a phone and we run our local software on it. Um, Nemo Handy is a, one of our very popular devices for the sector. Um, this is a device that we take and we root and we put our own firmware on it and everything is self-contained in the device. So we get all the KPIs, everything on the device. Um, the one limitation here is you're somewhat limited to a four inch screen or five inch screen, depending on the phone. Um, so you can't see all the same KPIs and view it real time as you would with Nemo Outdoor. But the benefit is, is it's super compact. It's easy to carry around. It's discreet, has all those benefits. A couple of new things that we've had that you probably haven't seen. Um, the newest one is our Nemo Diagnostic Module. What this does is it is an external device. It's about the size of a hockey puck that you can plug into a commercial device um, without our firmware. And then it basically becomes a portable Nemo Handy solution without firmware. So one of the limitations of Nemo Handy is we have to put our own firmware on it. The NDM gets around that. So now you can go to the store, buy an S21, uh, plug it in, put it in diagnostic mode and be up and running. You just have a little extra box to carry around with you. When the S22 comes out, you don't have to come back to Keysight. You're not buying new phones, new firmwares. You would take that device, you open the ports on it, plug it in. All of the licensing is in here, which also makes it flexible. If you want to do a T-Mobile S21 versus the unlocks, you can switch phones as many times as you want. The license is here. It's not in the phone. It's very flexible, especially for private networks where some phones work better or different chipsets. Or if you're traveling around the world, you can grab a phone locally, um, plug that phone in, and again, you don't need firmwares. Um, one of the other new things that we're working on that's pretty exciting is the 5G device analytics. What this does is this ties our Nemo product into uh, the greater Keysight portfolio. Uh, so one of the things you can do is you can use our UXM network emulator and the device analytics will control both the network emulator and the phone. And then we can take the log files from both and combine them to do a full end-to-end -end analysis. So one of the problems with 5G is when you're only using Nemo products, you can only see the phone side. And with the core products, you can only see the core side. So depending on where the problem is, without the full solution, you may not be able to see everything. This combines that data back together so you can actually see both ends and see where messages are missed or confused or that kind of stuff. It also works to do benchmarking phones. So you can compare a Samsung S20 to a 21 or different versions, different firmware versions on the same phone. So this is a, a great device add-on product that allows you to really dig in and, and see different analytics between different devices, different cores, that kind of stuff. Additionally, we have Nemo Cloud, which will combine any of our collection products, um, and then it adds an end-to-end -end workflow. So Nemo Cloud controls the collection, tells you what scripts to run, when you want to run it, where the driver is supposed to go, does all of that. The data automatically comes back into Nemo Cloud, and then we help pass the data onto our post-processing solutions all automatically. So if you run tests all day, you automatically get reports. Um, this is nice because again, you can stick a Nemo handy in somebody's pocket and they don't have to touch it. Everything can be 100% controlled from somebody in the office with Nemo Cloud. The reports automatically come in um, and it, it's fully automated. On the post-processing solution, we now have two options. Um, Nemo Analyze is our desktop solution, and then we have a new 5G RAN analytics product, which actually does 4G despite its name. Um, and this is 100% cloud-based, so it's HTML 100%, hosts in an Amazon server or locally. Um, but what's nice here is there's no installers on the computer, so you can log in anywhere, um, and you're just up and running. So again, that's that's very quick. Um, 
that's all I had. Obviously, if there's questions, we can dig into any of these products more in depth. But the takeaway here is we, we have some new exciting things going on um, and uh, we're expanding the product line and integrating it further with the other key site solutions. Great, thank you, Nathan. So again, if folks have any questions or would like more information on any of these products, please feel free to enter that into the chat. And uh, at this time, I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Pranav Yoshi to uh, talk about some of the offerings that we have through our Ixia product line. Uh, go ahead, Pranav. Yes, can you hear me now? Uh, I hear you, hear you fine and I see your slides, thank you. Cool, thank you. Uh, let me go in a presentation mode and just confirm if you can see it properly. I'm just going on presentation mode. Can you still see my full slide? No, I only see the full slide. I don't see the um, the list on the side any longer. It's perfect. Thank you. Okay, great, great. Uh, so uh, thanks for the opportunity. I think I'm uh, very excited to introduce you to some of the new stuff uh, which we as a key site has. Uh, so uh, Steve already mentioned some of the, like this diagram at a end-to-end uh, -end scale, and I'm just uh, uh, showing you very high level and very brief. As you can see that uh, 5G network end-to-end -end build with so many different components, and it brought in uh, different standard, different uh, variant, many new things being cloud native uh, approach, as well as the ORAN Alliance. So all those different things brought in new challenges. And in order to tackle that, uh, the good thing is uh, being a key site, uh, we have a very broader portfolio to represent different problems or different questions you can ask to the 5G network and how you can get an answer for where we have different solutions to help you out uh, uh, for the same. So this is an end-to-end -end diagram. We already discussed uh, some of the products from the RF perspective and uh, uh, analysis perspective. And now we dive deeper into uh, further going higher layer and see what different products we have and how you can make use of it. So as, as we look at this end-to-end -end network, um, and as we talked about the just uh, a few minutes uh, ago, uh, Nathan mentioned about the Nemo Handy, uh, having using a ha uh, handset and analyzing how the network is doing. Uh, that's that's great. Uh, we can do it in lab environment as well as uh, outside. But in, in, in certain cases where you have a need to scale those number of UEs, uh, or you may not have all the functionality on the UEs enabled yet, uh, very early stage of, uh, let's say, release 16, some UEs may not be supposed to supporting it, but you need those release 16 UEs as um, uh, URLLC and some other features you want to test against. How you can do that? Um, for that, uh, we as a key site, we have the UE emulator. Uh, it it emulates the UEs and exposed to uh, FR1, FR2 frequencies, depending on what you are using uh, to the network. And it can talk with the real G node B and um, with the real G node B as well as the real core end to end network. And this is just a set of UEs you have. You have a con complete control on configuring the different set of UEs. Uh, you can go up to 100 to thousands uh, of UEs in terms of uh, loading it. At the same time, uh, UEs will also capable of running an application. We we have an applications tool which can you can specify type of uh, HTTP, uh, uh, voice over NR, uh, UDP, uh, TCP kind of uh, flows or real world applications like that, you can certainly emulate on top of those UEs, as well as capability to bring your own application uh, with certain configuration. You can have bring your own application and you'll be running with on top of this emulated UEs to validate your uh, application as well, how it perform on the 5G network end to end. Uh, in certain cases, this UE is capable of running on top of uh, like all things real, uh, at the same time, in certain cases where there are challenges where you don't have a core or you may need some functionality, we also have an options, uh, the core sim, where you can emulate the a complete 5G core, 4G core, and you will able to test the NSA, NSA um, deployment of your own and, uh, and isolate the G node B to do the thorough analysis on that. And being an emulator, it has a cap capability of uh, having a different traffic profiles, advanced mobility scenario, as well as fa uh, fading and interference, which could uh, which could make it more realistic 
in a lab environment to test with uh, emulated UEs. Moving on to the next step, I'm just moving from left to right based on my screen and the diagram, if you can see it. Now, you have the UE emulators talking with the uh, the real G node B. Uh, the talking point, it, it was like connectorized RF or radiated RF um, with, uh, uh, with deployment. In, it could be a horn antenna with a millimeter wave or um, in, a, in a chamber. Now, your point of interest with the G node B, uh, with the ORN alliance, different splits there. Uh, you may be sourcing the RU of the shelf, but you are developing DU or CU, or you want to taste the DU and CU, isolating that. In 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 that, the same uh, UE seam solution, a uh, little bit scaled down because RF part is not there anymore. It will be talking EC pre directly to the DU and CU, but uh, we have a solution, we call it RU seam, which will emulate the UEs and the RU portion of the uh, 5G. And uh, point of interest he'll, he will be here is the ODU and OCU. And again, it could be talking with a real core or it could be surrounded by the, the core sim. Now, with, uh, with the protocol split, um, some of the challenges with the C plane and U plane, talking with the DU, uh, emulating RU, will able to answer many questions, which is, uh, which is a new challenge uh, with the ORAN Alliance. Uh, uh, moving further to the right, now uh, we, from going from the uh, UE, if the CU is point of interest in terms of uh, doing and developing and verifying how well it worked, we have the DU scene uh, where we it, it will be part of the UEs, uh, RU and DU will be emulated within the scope of this uh, DU scene and it will, uh, it will be testing the CU scene. It could be talking with the real network or it could be a core network. And this is uh, both NSA and SA mode is uh, available. This solution is uh, uh, the virtual solution. Uh, it can, uh, um, we, we definitely provide uh, hardware if needed, or it could be going on a uh, customer specified uh, server where we, uh, and, and it's a virtual solution. It can be uh, hosting on the customer servers too. Now, uh, this is another new uh, with uh, uh, ORAN split or ORAN lines introduced. Uh, it's RIC. Uh, RIC is a RAN intelligent controller. Basically, it's a kind of a brain of um, brain of 5G networks or making it more smarter. Uh, and in order to taste the RIC, there are uh, there are many smarts being introduced. But it, uh, at the scale, how well it works, how the messaging is supported we have the rig tester uh, as a solutions. Uh, this solution is also being virtual. Uh, it can be hosted on uh, customer server or we, we do provide a server option. Uh, basically, it will uh, it will emulate the UEs. Uh, it will emulate the, the RAN portion of it, DU and CU, um, and exposed, uh, the, uh, expose the rig uh, around it and surrounded it and uh, help it to validate some of the logics QoS, traffic steering, RAN optimization, RAN slicing, load balancing, all those different challenges introduced uh, with the RIC test, uh, with the RIC being a new component as part of the 5G ORAN. And uh, the last piece in the ORAN split uh, is uh, the CU. So uh, we also have the solutions for emulating the CU. Uh, exposing the RU, DU, or the real UEs, or it could be surrounded by the RU seam or a UE seam and exposing RU and a DU uh, for, uh, from the point of test interest in this case. And uh, the CU seam solution is also being, being a uh, cloud native solution. So it could be um, deployed in our provider server or it could be anywhere, uh, customer server. And it will emulate the CU and the core uh, completely to expose the real world DU and uh, RU and the UEs or emulated UEs or emulated RUs. Uh, going further towards our right, so going um, higher in the core now. So now the 5G core is also uh, uh, 
it's uh, designed from scratch. Uh, and keeping the cloud deployment in mind, the flexibility of the cloud, what it brings, uh, the elasticity and uh, independent scaling, all those features being integrated in the 5G core. We need a platform which can support and which can uh, coexist with a similar architecture. And we have developed a solution called Load Core. Uh, what does Load Core do is basically it's capable of emulating any of the 5G node. Here in this example, what has been uh, displayed is the Load Core is emulating UEs and G Node Bs and exposing all the other 5G nodes. Uh, as point of interest in terms of uh, uh, testing, exposing N3 and N1, N2 interfaces and N6 interfaces on the other end. Um, the benefit of uh, this solution is you can, you don't need, uh, if you are if you are validating uh, the performance of a 5G core, how well it works, if you are validating uh, the integrity of the solutions, scaling, uh, network slicing, all those other features which bring with the 5G core, we will able to uh, emulate all of those uh, and surround those by uh, any load core nodes and expose those uh, different 5G core nodes or at a high level, all those different features to see how well it's working. Um, and it is driven by, um, um, it's more of a use case and topology driven architecture. So it can help you to, um, validate 5G core uh, uh, completely uh, from different endpoints perspective. So we we talked about the uh, the network from and we went from UEs onward to the the whole uh, uh, network uh, to the end from the application perspective. Uh, in between with the ORAN Alliance, the other challenge come to uh, a picture. So previously when we have the 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 G Node B or, or or the base station all together, um, everything was co-located. Everything was uh, uh, completely designed in a proprietary manner, and things work um, uh, by the vendor, whoever is providing that uh, uh, solution. Now with the ORAN split, uh, RU, DU, and CU will could be a different vendor. Uh, any of those devices could be picked up from off the shelf, and it they should coexist and work. So there are some coordination is needed. Uh, there are some security challenges which need to be answered for. Um, citing all those different challenges, uh, there are different uh, standard has provision to make it better, make it uh, more viable. In, in that case, the transport uh, become very important. And, uh, and within the scope of the transport, the timing uh, for uh, timing between those devices become more important. And uh, with the PTP, with the sync key, um, uh, time sensitive network protocol support, all those new challenges been introduced. And one has to validate that those devices or some of the switches, uh, some of the, the network switches or network components sitting in the middle, which should be capable of those, uh, uh, those features. And it has to be validated in a sense that it's working the way it's expected. From the Amplane perspective, NetConf um, communications between uh, configuring the uh, configuring the uh, uh, coordinating between the RU and the DU from the Amplane perspective, NetConf become uh, important. As well as the uh, MacSec perspective, the new security aspect of uh, things introduced. How you can test it? How you can verify that? In order to uh, do that. Uh, we has a solution and we have an applications called IX Network Software. And we also have a, um, the hardware, which is a line card, uh, the Novus, uh, we call it Novus. And that, that has all those features which can go and help uh, any customer who has questions to be answered for uh, this area. We can, uh, we can emulate uh, those endpoints with those protocols and with those applications. Uh, and the necessary traffic and uh, give them a confidence in how well it is working um, from transport security, transport synchronization and the Ethernet transfers perspective. <clears throat> now, uh, looking at the network, uh, 5G network end to end, security is the key. 
and we we know the security is something uh, become uh, it's already more prominent and it is become uh, more and more important day by day. Now, now with the 5G ground up, the security has been considered to be one of the key aspects need to be think of and plan for. So we can uh, when when the network is deployed, the users being using it. And there are different uh, checkpoints, different controls uh, being thought for and provided so it can uh, confidently could be deployed and conf user can confidently uh, use it without worrying about uh, some of the security challenges. So the, the key site uh, has a very broader security uh, offering and the portfolio. And uh, we had a mindset with uh, our um, our leaders in the space which can um, which can help us think through and provide the different products which can help us. So when we think about the 5G, we need to think about the 5G the same way we started. We need to think about from the UE perspective. We need to think about from the RU um, and going going onwards towards the application. Uh, the UE security is something uh, one has to make sure it is there. From the access point of view, we need to think about the access security. Now, end to end from the network point of view at a different level, the network security also very important application because application will be served. So application security also need to be um, un under consideration. With 5G core, um, service-based architecture being introduced uh, and uh, API-driven uh, communications, we need to make sure how well that is working. Um, and with the ORAN alliance, with the split, uh, new challenges and something we need to now, new components will be talking with each other where we need to make sure that how well they are secured. And the cloud, the whole architecture is uh, cloud friendly and many components will exist in the cloud. Now, what we have not thought before need to be considered and the cloud security has to be keep in mind, not only just from a, a security or the breaking perspective, but also from uh, how the architecture can hold up and how resilient and how it can support um, the load, uh, the scale, which going to be um, introduced. Uh, now, uh, this is a very like this. This could be a whole topic by itself, but it's concise in one slide. So uh, hopefully I will just uh, touch a very high level and justify it. Uh, as we talked about all those different points where it is important to have um, and consider different security aspect. Uh, Keysight has a solutions to address that from UE attack a point of view uh, and the five connection point of view. Um, basically, uh, we have a solutions where you will be testing the UEs with the uh, with the security uh, app running with the UXM together and uh, exposing those UEs and devices for certain type of attacks and verifying that how secure those devices are. Uh, second thing is when you think about the UE aspect, uh, uh, some of the UEs could be fuzzing the message and other stuff with a UE seam uh, and uh, even the load core perspective. We have a capability to uh, do from the signaling uh, signaling side where the control messages are and uh, some of the messages intentionally uh, intentionally making it uh, uh, making it incorrect uh, wrong IEs. Uh, and see how the network going to hold or how the uh, how the network end to end will going to support it or how they uh, react when something abnormally with the normal traffic or the normal UEs will show up. So all those capabilities are built into this platform where it could be uh, utilized from authentication perspective, impairing some of the messages which could be normal, uh, creating a DOS attack, uh, so all those different aspects could be emulated within uh, within this platform. When it comes to uh, when it comes to a uh, cloud challenges, uh, we have and and not only like now with the uh, Docker and Kubernetes, um, some of the applications will exist in certain uh, different environment. Even in the not just only a VM base, but now going into um, uh, going into Docker's and Kubernetes. We have a native platform called Cyper can be uh, can be exist. Uh, those endpoint could exist on those similar environment and validating the um, validating the validating the end to end 
applications, how it's performing. So looking at the from the application perspective, from uh, from like firewall configurations or different challenges uh, along the line where you will be putting a different controls within the network to handle any impurity or any challenges or attacks uh, generated by from the application layer. Uh, we have the breaking point uh, uh, breaking point solutions which can emulate those kind of attacks with a real world valid uh, viable traffic uh, in in parallel. So now you can expose your network with those uh, challenges and see how well it's been working and the resiliency perspective. Uh, conformance testing is also one of the key, which is very important. And we have a solutions where different protocol need to be complied with uh, with the standard. And IX Anvil is one of the solutions which can feed in where you can validate uh, from the protocol perspective that how the different devices or different network are complying with that. So you can confidently deploy it uh, as, a, as a network when you are doing it. Last but not least, uh, the virtualization is a key with 5G and uh, most of our platform, as you see here, can coexist in that virtual environment, cloud native, or even testing that virtual environment for its uh, compute network and storage. Um, and and that, that could help you uh, not only from the application perspective, signaling perspective, but from the platform perspective to uh, validate the security aspect of that. So uh, this is a good segue. This is a cloud peak solutions uh, um, uh, talking about the bottlenecks uh, within the virtual network when you are deploying it virtual. Uh, it could be a private network. You will be creating it with uh, hypervisors uh, and provisioning, provisioning different uh, VNFs. You want to see when uh, when scaling happen when more um, more VM could be created on a fly, how your network going to uh, handle it. Uh, so Cloud Peak as a solutions will allow you to uh, emulate uh, emulate noisy neighbors, uh, creating the load uh, on the system to uh, identify the bottleneck uh, and compare different uh, infrastructure or the architectures you will be uh, you'll be proposing and do going through all this process, you can optimize your configurations to get the best out of your uh, deployment and testing the compute network and the storage at the same time. Uh, here's the our latest solution, uh, uh, the Cyperf. Uh, we build it uh, cloud native solutions. It can be exist in the on premises. It can be anywhere in the public cloud or the private cloud. Uh, very flexible. Uh, you deploy those endpoints and it will allow you to generate the real world application. Uh, DDoS attacks, malware, uh, all those different impurity you see in the real world uh, with the ease of uh, uh, ease of deployment, hard to reach places being virtualized, public cloud, private cloud, uh, private network and making all uh, all together. Uh, some of the features which is being a cloud native have a auto scaling resiliency in terms of uh, uh, if the endpoint goes down it has uh, it can come back up as well as supporting the high performance now this this solutions can enable any customer to do the end to end testing uh, on top of it and any of those nodes which we have seen like especially the ue emulation uh, this could be sitting behind the ue emulations and those emulated ues could be utilized to run this kind of attack traffic on on top of it with the ip pass through feature and similarly that any any applications uh, natively or the private applications could also support that with that IP pass through features, both on the UE emulation as well as from the load core core emulation perspective that those feature exist there. Okay, give me one second. Sorry. Fast. Uh, so here is the view. I think the, uh, what I just mentioned it. Uh, here is the view where the breaking point as a solution can also help, which can allow you to generate a DDoS malware botnet with real world application. The breaking point platform um, has available in the hardware space uh, with a hardware based solution with a chassis and uh, and test ports virtual as well as it exists in the public cloud. Um, and from the network and 5G network perspective, uh, when it comes to an application, it could be sitting behind the emulated UEs, UEs with the IP pass-through features, 
uh, and surround the network to run end to end application and testing many of the many of the challenges within the network space uh, or some of the controls being placed within the network to avoid uh, or prevent those attacks and it will be validating that uh, confidently for you uh, to do that. Similarly, the load core has a similar feature where you can be emulating the UE and complete G node B and exposing your 5G core uh, for those same security controls um, and, and, and testing it. Now, when we talk about uh, network and uh, some of the challenges based on uh, attacks uh, could be generated, uh, or it could be malwares, uh, DDoS, uh, et cetera. Going beyond that, uh, there could be being, being a network by itself, it will have some impurity which will be generated by different devices placed in the network. Uh, in a real world environment, you, uh, when the network being deployed, uh, there could be a bad device, not uh, or maybe some multiple hops you go through uh, when you end to end respective. It will introduce some variance. Uh, it could be from the latency perspective, or it could be some bad device dropping some packet somewhere. All those impurity does exist in the real world network. And when we build a network and we deploy the network, we need to be confident enough saying that how well it will work even in those worst case scenario, or maybe there is a SLA uh, associated with that, that it, it has to be working certain way in, in uh, even in those kind of challenging environment. Uh, we as a key site, we have a network emulator. What does the network emulator do is it sits in the middle um, in, it's just a bump in a wire. And uh, depending on where it's located, you will have a complete view of what's going um, uh, from the network perspective it will be able to see all the packets going in and out. It allows you to set uh, specific filters uh, on a specific flows uh, or apply different, uh, different impurity in the network to validate your, uh, validate your resiliency of the network, how stable the network is, even in this is some of the challenging condition, or what happened, how your network will behave when things like that going to, uh, going to happen. It allows you to, uh, Link uh, uh, basically it's allow you to delay the packets with certain um, with uh, different. Uh, it's a constant delay, or it could be a distributed uh, uh, delay, or you can apply your own logic or the variance how you want to apply uh, some of this impurity. It's allow you to uh, introduce fragmentation, rate limiting, drop packets, reorder. So all of those impurity you may see on the real world network is possible. In, in a controlled way environment, uh, controlled environment, you can introduce with a network emulator solution. With this, uh, um, with, with network emulator, uh, you, will, uh, you will also have um, a capability to bring the whole network down and, and then recover it uh, in, in a few seconds. So uh, there are all, all those things which you can see in the real world is, and, and with this, uh, 5G challenges, we have brought in this new solutions, Network Emulator 100 gig, which will support the 125 gig uh, or level of um, uh, connections and impurity on those flows. Uh, you may be familiar with this. Uh, this is uh, not as such, I would say, it's not introduced with the 5G, but this tool we have in our portfolio for a long time. Uh, you may have been exposed to it or you may not, but uh, this is called IX Chariot. The IX Chariot is a software-based uh, uh, agent. You can deploy it in any platform. It could go on the iOS, Android, uh, Linux OS, Windows OSs, and um, those endpoints will be deployed uh, anywhere in the within the networks too, or any any network endpoints where those app, uh, those it sits on top of those OSs as I mentioned. The benefit of this is uh, this is this is sitting on top of uh, uh, on top of I would say layer four and allowing you uh, actually to represent you with the uh, different application behavior or application script uh, available on top of it. 
So you can emulate like a uh, voice application, you can emulate the video application, you can emulate uh, um, like HTTP, TCP, UDP, all those kind of application. And you, you with a, with a central, central control or central console, you will be able to run the different, um, different type of tests between those endpoints. Now the endpoints could be existing in the network, in the, it could be in the live network, um, and uh, the other endpoints could be somewhere in the network serving those applications, so utilizing your end-to-end -end path. Uh, and, and within this, uh, with this, the benefit of this is it will allow you to run the real-world application, and with that, it will allow you to monitor how those endpoints perform with this, uh, with respect to throughput, latency, loss, jitter, MOS, etc. And uh, and this allow you to go to the places where you hard to reach places, and you can scale number of uh, endpoints as you uh, as you want, and it will give you a comprehensive view for your end-to-end uh, -end network. It it doesn't. It can work over Wi-Fi, it can work over cable network, it can work over 5G, it can work over 4G. So it is very, um, I would say, standalone tool which can work across different network to validate some of the application challenges and the performance uh, verification, how things are working end to end. So we, we talked about all those, um, the end to end network, uh, uh, in different components, we can emulate it at different points. and now from the whole complete network security challenges as well as how we can overcome or we can validate uh, all those different aspects. Now this is something uh, uh, different in a way when the network is in operation, uh, network is working, uh, there are how the how well the network is working, uh, what performance you may be seeing or what kind of uh, anomaly you may be seeing. There is some continuous monitoring is a key to do that. And Keysight has uh, the visibility portfolio. Uh, basically, uh, and we have the newly introduced key, um, Keysight uh, 5G mobile stack. Uh, and the new solution with the Vision X, key very high scale, creating a GTP correlation uh, uh, at a 5G scale and supporting the higher demand which 5G brings. This solutions could be sitting in the middle, uh, monitoring the network uh, and feed, uh, all the network uh, taps will be feeding into this platform and uh, you have an opportunity to apply uh, uh, appropriate filtering, appropriate, uh, uh, appropriate uh, uh, rules so you can monitor the traffic which you are really interested for and you have uh, monitoring tools you can feed into it and you can validate your operations of the network and how well it is working end to end. And we have the platform uh, again with the 5G and uh, uh, not, not even before 5G, we have the solutions available in the virtual as well as physical uh, space. So it could be deployed in a different uh, environment as necessary. Uh, so we talked about the 5G. When we talked about the 5G, many times the Wi-Fi also come into a picture. And Wi-Fi also coming up with this uh, uh, one of the one of the biggest uh, update for themselves, which is like Wi-Fi six standard. And within the Wi-Fi six standards, uh, Keysight also has a solutions we call Wave Test six. Uh, basically, these solutions can uh, support uh, hundreds of clients, emulated uh, talking with uh, real access point. Uh, you have an options to surround end to end, uh, so it can allow you to emulate the real world application and give you the real time statistics and the correlations from layer one to layer seven uh, perspective. Uh, the the design we have it's a uh, the we design our five uh, uh, in in house and so we have our own IP on it. So any standard. Uh, uh, it is it is kind of a gold standard in the market space to test uh, any of the uh, any of the access point on the Wi-Fi space for years. And these solutions we have for a long time, uh, we we has evolved as we as the technology has been evolved, and it can also support thousands of uh, uh, thousands of flows, real world application, and 
uh, validate the Wi-Fi 6 access point uh, along the process. Uh, this will be my last slide, uh, but just to give you an overview that all of this platform you have seen or all of the solutions we have talked about, uh, Keysight is big in automation. So we provide APIs and solutions to do an automation. Here, uh, one of the solutions our uh, professional services team has put together, we call it IX uh, Store, where Depending on the different challenges within the network, it could be NFV, it could be um, core network, it could be um, five, 4G or 5G. Uh, different perspective using a different uh, key side products, we have made a ready to go test suites. So there are a set of test cases uh, available with the suites. You can just, uh, you, you have the solution, um, any, any of this XCS solution integrated uh, within your test environment and set of these test cases could be a uh, could run and give you a pass fail very quickly. And there is a set of uh, test cases available. You can pick and choose. You want to run the whole or you can uh, subset of it. But this solution is also available. I just want to introduce you. Uh, there are each of this topic, each of the slides, we can go much deeper into it. But this presentations, I want to keep it at high level. So. Uh, introducing it and at least to give you a uh, window into it so you can make use of it if you have any challenges there. So Marion, I will stop here. Uh, I think you can take a control back. Great, thank you Pranab, appreciate it. Um, so at this point, uh, we are down to just a, a few extra minutes. Um, so I, I see Kevin uh, Dobis, do you wanna, you just typed in uh, quite a bit of stuff into the chat here. Uh, you have FYI, Wave Judge captures upload and download from non Qualcomm phones, including Apple. The Wave Judge will decode all messages from all from any devices, Qualcomm chipset, chipset, or any other chipset, Apple, et cetera. So uh, uh, I just wanted to that, make it clear to Keith that we actually have tools that operate on, you know, a lot of the tools operate only on the Qualcomm chipset. Like the knee, I think that's what some of those Nemo questions were. I just wanted to be clear that the wave judge is agnostic to the chipset. If it's an Apple, you know, any non Qualcomm chipset device, we capture and decode all that information. We we don't care what the chipset is. I just wanted to make sure that was clear. Th thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, also wanted to make sure that people knew that the, uh, the uh, module for the Nemo handy, the, um, uh, what do we call it? The Nemo diagnostic module also works with any Android based chipset doesn't have to be Qualcomm as well. So with that, we are right up against time. Uh, if you have any questions at this point, if you want to stay on longer and you want to come off of mute and ask some questions, that would be great. Uh, otherwise, again, as I mentioned, we did record this session. I will go ahead and send out the link to that recording. I'm also going to see if we can uh, get it into a private YouTube configuration so that I'll be able to send out the link to that so that you don't have to get back into Teams in order to see the presentation. Um, and uh, I really appreciate all of your help. Hopefully this was informative in some of the areas where Keysight maybe has not played before, but where I think we can be of assistance going forward. So at that point, I'm going to uh, stay on for a little bit. I'm going to ask our speakers to stay on for a little bit. And if anyone has a question, if you want to take yourself off of mute, we can have a conversation. Um, otherwise, um, thank you again for attending. We appreciate your time. Have a great day. Marianne and Steve and company, thank you very much for the presentation. We appreciate it, Mike. You have a great day. Hope to see you soon. Yep, you too. Mike. Bye. 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 Keith, I don't know if you had any other questions that you wanted to ask, or uh, Eric Blair, if you had any questions that you wanted to ask. I know Keith, you had had some interest in the uh, in the San Jolie product, uh, perhaps working in conjunction with some of the folks in the uh, the D six lab. Um, I I know that uh, it was 
Mark Fernandez's intention to be on, but I don't think he was able to join today. So I don't know if you have any other specific questions or if there's anything else we can do to help you with that. Eric commented, Keith already asked my questions. I appreciate that, Eric. Thank you. And Keith, you're on mute in case you were, you're speaking. I'm not sure. All right. Well, I want to thank all of our speakers today. Um, oh, Keith says he's not sure if his mic is working. We don't we don't hear you and it looks like you're muted. And I, I can't unmute people. I can only mute them for some reason. I don't know why that is. Okay, so Keith is gonna gonna chat with us offline. Um, so at this point, if there aren't any other questions, I think we're we're gonna close out the meeting. And again, I want to thank everybody for attending.